Now, um, uh, we have two mechanisms uh, involved in the block of polyspermia. For, uh, the first mechanism uh, uh, is uh, first mechanism in the first mechanism, it is the oocyte that is uh, implicated in this uh, block of poly polyspermia. And in the second me uh, mechanism, it is the zona pellucida that is implicated in this, will be implicated in this block of polysperm. So the mechanism where the oocyte is uh, implicated in the, mem in the block of polys polysperm is called the fast block and is called the oocyte membrane block. So this first mechanism is called the oocyte membrane block, or the fast block, and it is due to the depolarization of the oocyte membrane after the binding of the first spermatozoa. So after the binding of the first spermatozoa to the uh, mem cytoplasmic membrane of the oocyte, this membrane will be depolarized. So we will have an increase in the negative charge of this uh, cytoplasmic membrane. It will be depolarized. And this depolarization will uh, uh, prevent uh, the binding of the sperm, uh, any the other sperm cells, to this oocyte membrane. Um, so in this way, uh, by uh, uh, the binding, when this first spermatozoa that binds will bind to the uh, oocyte membrane, we will have a depolarization and of this membrane, and this depolarization will lead to the fact that the other sperm cells that will reach this uh, oocyte and oocyte membrane will not be able to fuse with this membrane. Uh, and in this way, this depolarization created a transient prevention of any subsequent sperm binding to the oocyte. And uh, it is uh, consequently, so the depolarization of the oocyte membrane um, is involved in the block of polyspermy. Um, uh, and this block of polyspermy is induced by the binding of the first spermatozoa to the cytoplasmic membrane of the oocyte and its consequent depolarization. Now, the second mechanism of polyspermy block uh, involves the zona pellucida or the reaction with the zona pellucida. And this mechanism is called slow block and the slow block of polyspermy and during this mechanism uh, in fact we will have changes that will occur to the zona pellucida and after that the first uh, uh, sperm cell will reach the zona pellucida and will cross it to bind to the uh, oocyte uh, as you know we have uh, cortical granules on the surface of the oocyte and uh, um, we'll have, this is the oocyte, this is the oocyte, if you can see, and you have those dots which are the cortical granules, okay, at the uh, cortical region, and they are called cortical granules, and they are at the surface or at the cortical region of the oocyte. After the fusion of the sperm cell with this oocyte, those cortical granules with, will fuse with the cytoplasmic membrane and will release their content in the outside, in the pivotal line uh, space. And in fact, those cortical granules contain uh, enzymes. Okay, so they will release the prote their proteolytic enzymes in the pivotal line space. And so we will have an exocytosis of the cortical granules or of the cortical granules content, uh, which will release the various enzymes, which will lead to the release of various enzymes that were inside of those granules. And uh, from the, uh, you know, as an example of those enzymes, we have the hydrolase, the proteinase, the peroxidase. Uh, those enzymes are um, have a role in or play a role in modificating the zona pellucida glycoproteins 
and in hardening in the hardening of the zona pellucida. So once we will have uh, the exocytosis of the cortical granules and that they will release their various enzymes in the perivital line space, the enzymes released will act on the zona pellucida and will induce modifications in the glycoproteins of the zona pellucida and will induce the hardening of those zona pellucida. So uh, this hardening of the zona pellucida and the modification of the uh, glycoproteins will uh, inhibit any sort you know, or will prevent any sort of interaction between the sperm cell and the zona pellucida. So it will be difficult for the sperm cell to recognize those zona pellucida pro glycoproteins because they were modified and it will be difficult for them. They will not be able anymore to hydrolyze the zona pellucida and uh, to, cross, uh, to cross it. And this will lead, uh, as a consequence, we will have a prevention of the subsequent binding or penetration of other sperm cells, of the following sperm cells. And this will lead to a block of polysperm. Okay, so we have two mechanisms uh, implicated in the block of the poly polyspermy. The first one is the oocyte membrane block, and uh, the second one is the zona reaction. And the first one is called the fast block, and the zona reaction is a slow block polyspermy mechanism, uh, a slow block of polyspermy mechanism. Um, so as a conclusion uh, regarding the role of the zona pellucida, uh, I repeat that we saw that the zona pellucida play a role in the species specific sperm egg binding in the induction of the acrosomal reaction, as we have seen by binding to the sperm cell to the ZP1, 3, and 4, and uh, we will have the induction of the uh, acrosomal reaction and thus the uh, hydrolysis of this uh, zona pellucida. And uh, this zona pellucida will have a role in the block of polyspermy or in avoiding the polyspermy uh, <clears throat> because it will be, um, its proteins or its glycoproteins will be modified and it will become uh, harder after the uh, exocytosis of the cortical granules. Uh, so this will lead to uh, the block of polyspermy. And also it will protect the embryo prior to implantation. Now, uh, so now we have the fusion of the sperm cell with the oocyte, okay? This oocyte was still arrested in the metaphase two. And if you remember, we said that it is following this fertilization, this fusion of the sperm cell with the egg, that uh, we will have the resumption of the meiosis two in the egg or the, in the oocyte two. And this resumption of meiosis is induced by, um, or we have, uh, in fact, during the arrest in the metaphase two, the meiosis two was arrested at the metaphase, at the metaphase two. And uh, we have two factors that are implicated in this uh, metaphase two arrest, the MPF and uh, the CSF. And as we, as we have explained in the chapter five, the MPF is composed from two subunits, the cyclin dependent kinase one and the cyclin B. And the SESF is composed from two proteins, the CMOS and the cyclin-dependent kinase 2. And the CSF stabilizes the MPF complex, uh, which causes the metaphase to persist. So in order for the metaphase to persist, we should have this MPF complex in its uh, dimeric phase is, uh, shape. And we should have this MPF complex composed from those two proteins. And this complex should be stabilized by the CSF. Now, when the, we have the fertilization or the fusion and, or the penetration of the spermatozoon in the oocyte, we will have an increase in the calcium levels. And those increase in the calcium levels 
so okay here there is a problem we should um, uh, we have an increase in the calcium levels after the fertilization here we have fertilization and increase in the calcium levels this will lead to the destruction of the csf factor and um, the release of and activation of the anaphase promoting factor. This anaphase promoting factor will lead to the degradation or the proteolysis of the cyclin B, which is uh, the, the subunit of the MPF complex. Uh, so this MPF will lead to the ubiquitination of the cyclin B. Uh, the ubiquitination is uh, an addition ubiquitin or ubiquitin proteins to the cyclin B. And it is always the ubiquitination process and you know, the addition of those ubiquitin proteins essential for its degradation by proteolysis. Okay, and so uh, this APF will induce the ubiquitination of the cyclin B and its consequent proteolysis. So when the cyclin B is proteolyzed, there will not uh, there will not be enough cyclin B to complex to complex with the cyclin dependent kinase one, and the MPF will be inactivated. So, when this MPF will be inactivated, the meiosis can progress and the oocyte can achieve the meiosis two and it can exit from the metaphase two and achieve the meiosis two to give uh, one. Uh, otide and a polar body, the second polar body. So here we have two uh, phenomena related to the activation of the MPF. The first one is the destruction of the CSF. The destruction of the CSF will facilitate or will um, uh, disrupt, you know, will destabilize the MPF complex uh, and will lead to its dissociation destabilization and dissociation and also we have the degradation of the cyclin b so so this cyclin dependent kinase one will not find its partner anymore to bind with it and it cannot bind with it to form the mpf anymore and that's how the mpf is degraded uh, okay and when it is uh, degraded or destabilized uh, the uh, metaphase two uh, the cells will not be blocked in the metaphase two. The meiosis can uh, resume, can proceed, and it will be achieved. And we will obtain, um, as a consequence, uh, two cells: the otide and the uh, the second polar body that will be released. Um, so this is an unequal division of the cell, and it is oocyte will not divide to give us two equal cells like in the mitosis, but it will divide to give a big cell that is the egg and a small cell, the second polar body. Now, um, during uh, the fusion, you know, during the resumption of the meiosis, uh, so during the completion of the second meiotic division, uh, the uh, resumption of the meiosis is accompanied by an increase in the egg metabolism. Okay, this metabolism is um, will lead to um, important synthesis reactions and oxygen consumption in the egg cell. Okay, we will have synthesis of proteins uh, and oxygen con consumption in the egg cell. And also we will have the translation of the maternal, maternal messenger RNA that will start. We had pre, in the previous steps, in the oocyte we had um, uh, the transcription that is during the oogenesis. So we have the messenger RNAs of many genes, but those messenger RNAs, uh, you know, uh, many, uh, some of them were not uh, yet translated. So at this the step when the after the fusion of the uh, or the fertilization and the fusion of the sperm cell with the oocyte, uh, this uh, translation is activated, and um, we will have the transcription of many proteins uh, that are uh, necessary for the later stages. Now, uh, 
uh, after the fusion um, uh, of the sperm cell with the uh, uh, oocyte, okay, here we have the fusion of the sperm cell with the oocyte. We said we have uh, the induction of resumption of the meiosis too, okay, and also we have some changes that will occur at the level of this sperm cell. Uh, so as soon as it is incorporated in the oocyte, the spermatozoon undergoes many modifications. First, the flagellar elements and the mitochondria disintegrate, so will degrade, will be degraded, the flagellar element and the mitochondria. And, uh, but the sperm centriole will persist um, in most of the, the mammals and in the humans. So the centriole, we said that we have uh, the proximal and the distal centriole. So we have uh, the distal uh, centriole that gave the, was at the origin of the um, formation of the flagellum. And the other one, the other centriole will persist in uh, the sperm cell. And this centriole will uh, play a role in the formation of the mitotic spindle uh, necessary, you know, uh, during the first division of the zygote. Okay, this sperm centriole will persist. It will duplicate and it will later, uh, it will duplicate, it will participate in the establishment of the mitotic spindle, which is essential for the first zygotic cleavage. Female centriole, uh, we, we talked about this in the last chapter, that will be eliminated uh, during the second meiotic division. And only the pericentriolar materials of the female centriole will, you know, in the fem of the female cell will remain, but the centriole will be uh, eliminated during the, me uh, the meiosis two. Okay, so during the meiosis two, uh, and the activation of this uh, resumption of this meiotic, meiosis to the female centriole will be eliminated. Only the pericentriolar material of the female cell will remain, but the centrioles that will be used for the first zygotic division or cleavage come uh, from the uh, sperm cell. It was the centriole that was uh, persisted in the sperm cell. It will duplicate and it will participate in the establishment of the spurs mitotic spindle during the first zygotic cleavage or division. Uh, now, as the oocyte 2 resumes uh, its metabolic activity and completes the meiosis 2, the nuclear envelope of the sperm cell breaks down into small membrane vesicles. So we have the, uh, the meiosis 2 that is uh, proceeding here in the oocyte. At the same time, this sperm cell here, the um, nuclear membrane of the sperm cell will be degraded, uh, will break down into small membrane vesicles. And uh, the sperm chromatin, you remember that the sperm chromatin was very condensed and um, we have protamines in this uh, uh, in the sperm chromatin attached to the sperm chromatin and that will lead to its uh, compaction. Now, uh, this sperm chromatin that was very compact and very condensed is going to decondense, okay? And this decondensation process is uh, controlled by the presence of decondensation factor present in the egg cytoplasm. So the egg of this uh, oocyte contains some decondensation factor, uh, factors that will decondense this compact uh, chromatin of the sperm cell. And uh, we will have exchange of proteins which will allow the decondensation of the male uh, chromatin. And the decondensation will occur by the rupture of the disulf uh, disulfide bridges of the DNA-associated protein, because we have though we had those protamines uh, connected to the chromatin to the male chromatin, and uh, that were attached by the disulfide bridges. So the proteins present or the factors present in the cytoplasm of the oocyte uh, contains. Um, 
يعني some of those factors will break those disulfide bridges between the proteins uh, uh, of the DNA so of the DNA associated proteins and also the proteins will be replaced by histones so first we will have the rupture of the disulfide bridges of the DNA associated proteins and second we will have the replacement of those proteins by histones and this will lead to the decondensation of the uh, sperm chromatin or of the male chromatin and once this chromatin is decondensed we will have a new nuclear envelope that will be formed around this um, uh, male uh, chromosomes or male uh, chromatin okay and now uh, this chromatin that will be enclosed in this nuclear envelope will form what we call the male pronucleus okay so we will have pronucleus uh, a nuclear uh, that will be formed um, so this is a nuclear envelope the nuclear envelope will be reconstituted around the decondensed chromatin forming the male pronucleus that uh, and this male pronucle pronucleus will acquire nucleoli and increase considerably in volume so this is the sperm cell entering the oocyte uh, once it is inside the oocyte we said that the uh, nuclear envelope of the sperm cell, okay, already the sperm cell uh, have lost its uh, outer cytoplasmic membrane on the head of the sperm cell. We don't have the acrosome anymore and had the inner acrosomal membrane and the nucleus here, a big nucleus containing a very compact uh, chromatin or DNA. So now after the fertilization or after the fusion of the sperm cell with the oocyte, we'll have the disappearance of this nuclear envelope and of this inner acrosomal membrane and of the nuclear envelope and the um, decompaction of this uh, sperm uh, DNA. And uh, then this uh, decondensed DNA will be uh, surrounded again by uh, a new nuclear envelope so this uh, decondensed dna will be surrounded by a new nuclear envelope forming the pronucleus where the will have the nucleoli that will appear again inside of this pronucleus mm, and this pronucleus will be containing the decondensed uh, male uh, chromatin or uh, dna uh, and it will increase in volume, okay? Uh, now, after the accomplishment, uh, at the same time, this cell, the oocyte was accomplishing or finishing its meiosis too. After the accomplishment of the meiosis too and the expulsion of the second polar body, okay, so we have uh, this cell and the expulsion of the second polar body. Uh, we had the DNA, you know, uh, normally after the accomplishment of the meiosis we should have uh, uh, as you know the uh, dna that will be uh, enclosed inside a nuclear envelope again so we will have a nuclear envelope that will be reconstituted around the maternal chromosomes and um, it will reconstitute uh, uh, around them and uh, after the reconstitution of this uh, nuclear envelope, the uh, chromatin, the maternal chromatin will decondense also. Um, and uh, so we will have the formation of the nuclear envelope and decondensation of the chromatin. And this will form the female pronucleus. So the female pronucleus is formed then after the expulsion, after the accomplishment of the second meiosis uh, and the expulsion of the second polar body. Uh, and uh, uh, and uh, in this pronucleus, we have a decondensed female chromatin. So the chromosomes or the DNA of the female will decondense again inside of this nucleus that will be called the female pronucleus and then uh, 
So now we have a female pronucleus and a male pronucleus, and those two pronuclei now will uh, migrate uh, to the center of the cell, okay, uh, due to the movement of the microtubules. Uh, this will lead to the, my, their migration to the center of the cell and they will fuse where they will fuse. So in fact, to have the zygote, we should have the fusion of the two pronuclei, uh, um, not the two nuclei, but the two pronuclei should fuse. Uh, but before, uh, yes, uh, before, um, that we have this fusion um, before that we have this migration and this fusion uh, we will have um, the replication of the dna content inside of each of those pronuclei so now we have let's say in this stage we have the male pronuclei and the female pronuclei uh, with a non-condensed uh, with a decondensed uh, dna in each of them uh, before that, for the fusion of those two, two pronuclei, we should have the uh, replication of the DNA. And uh, this replication is essential to have uh, um, two chromatids, two sister chromatids from each copy of the, you know, from each copy of chromosomes. Because as you know, we have a haploid set of chromosomes in each of those pronuclei, and those chromosomes are composed from one uh, chromatid. Now we will have a replication of the DNA to form two chromatids for uh, this haploid set of chromosomes. So we will always have in each pronuclei haploid set of chromosomes. After the replication of DNA, they will become they will have two chromatids, okay? And then we will have the fusion of uh, those uh, pronuclei. So at the same time where we have the replication, they will be migrating to the, uh, you know, from the subcortical position, from peripheral position to the center of the uh, egg or of the, the cell and due to the activity of the cytoskeleton microtubule. And at the center of the cell, they will fuse together. And this fusion of nuclei of the female and male nuclei is called the amphimixis. So this is the amphimixis, which means the fusion of the nuclei. So now the female and male uh, pronuclei, as we said, they approach it each other, their, their membrane, the membrane of the nuclei will disintegrate, will be degraded, and the nuclei fuse. This is the amphimixis. After their fusion, the chromatin strands will intermingle and it will get mixed to each other. And the diploid number of chromosomes is restored. So now we have a cell, a zygote here, containing a diploid number of chromosomes, 46 chromosomes, because here we had 23 and here we had 23. And when the nuclear envelopes disappeared and both uh, the DNA content of the both pronuclei uh, was mixed inside of the cell, we will have a zygote containing a diploid set of chromosomes and a 46 chromosomes. The zygote is formed. So the zygote is formed after the fusion of the pronuclei or of the nuclei, okay? And then uh, once the zygote is formed, the mitotic cleavage begins and we will start having the division of this uh, zygote to give um, uh, the multiple cells that will form the fetus. Uh, the zygote measures uh, 0 0.2 millimeter in diameter and carries the genetic material necessary to create a unique human being. And the fertilization results in species variation, as you know, with half of the chromosomes coming from the mother and the other half coming from the, uh, from the father, um, mixing the genes uh, each parent originally received from their parents. So the fertilization will result in the species, species variation. So this is all regarding this chapter. Uh, 
uh, I hope it was clear and uh, thank you for your attention.